Hello and welcome to this Uni Taster On Demand event today where we're going to be exploring university courses in criminology. My name is John Cheek, I'm the founder and director of Uni Taster Days and I'll be hosting this event today. I'm very conscious that you've not tuned in here for me, you've tuned in to hear from our excellent speakers so I'll keep this introduction really really short. I'm joined today by three exceptional speakers. I'm joined by Moitri, join us from the University of Chichester, Grace, join us from the University of Gloucestershire and also Bronwen, join us from the University of Wales, Trinity St David. Moitri is going to open things up in just a second to talk about reasons you might well want to consider a criminology course but also what to expect on it. That will then be followed by Grace. Grace is going to talk about application tips in relation to criminology but also how careers, you know, what, what often people go on to do as careers after completing a criminology course. And then last but certainly not least, Bronwyn from the University of Wales, Trinity St. Trinity St. David, is going to talk about combined courses or often known as, as joint courses in criminology, where you're going to be studying criminology with another subject. And, and, and Bronwyn's going to talk about how that actually works in, in reality and what to expect if you are interested in studying in that way. But conscious you're, you've tuned in here for our excellent speakers, I'll pass things straight on to Moitri, joining us from the University of Chichester. Moitri is a senior lecturer. Over to you. Hello everybody, so I'm going to start um, sharing my screen today. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, criminology and why you should, uh, why are you considering criminology and what to expect uh, when you do study uh, criminology at university. Um, I am uh, Dr. Moitri Banerjee. I am uh, the head of uh, psychology programs uh, and criminology programs uh, at the University of Chichester. I have added my uh, contact email address as well in case uh, any of you have any questions uh, that you think of, please feel free to get in touch as well. So why criminology? And I ask this question so many times to um, all our students. Um, criminology is um, a field uh, where we are seeing a lot of uh, interest uh, developing in criminology as well. And uh, every time I ask my students why you're interested in criminology, I always get the answers which somehow connect me back to Netflix, Netflix thrillers that have, um, that have become very popular lately. Um, and uh, it's uh, interesting that, uh, you know, this is what uh, is uh, drawing people to the study of criminology because uh, the truth is that uh, there is a need at the moment in the society of uh, understanding the field of criminology. Criminology in itself, it is a scientific procedure. So it's slightly different from the way it's showcased in, in the crime thrillers. It's, uh, it is a scientific procedure where uh, as criminologists, you would be learning and uh, working about uh, human actions uh, that are individual or also, as well as how they are uh, placed within the society. Uh, it uh, might be interesting also to be aware that uh, the field of criminology existed from the start of uh, uh, the human civilization. So the moment from which where uh, we started having norms, um, there were people who would uh, deviate from those norms and that would become deviant behavior. And as criminologists, uh, we are only trying to understand, uh, you know, uh, deviant behavior as it exists and how uh, we can uh, measure it, how we can study it scientifically, um, what we can do to prevent it, as well as what we can do to um, uh, cure uh, deviant behavior in terms of uh, curing it within the society. So uh, the field of criminology did exist from a very, very long time. And, you know, even much, much before uh, these uh, Netflix thrillers, um, crime novels uh, were being sold. People were always quite interested uh, in the field of criminology. Um, it is an interdisciplinary study, which I think is uh, the aspect of criminology that makes it so much more interesting. And in a minute, I'll be discussing why um, it's interdisciplinary and um, what are the different subjects that come together um, uh, that you have to uh, develop the knowledge of as uh, budding criminologists. Um, Within the field of criminology, uh, it's important to understand that uh, any deviant behavior, it is an individual phenomena. So there's a person who's engaging in a deviant behavior, 
uh, but it's also a social phenomena as well. And um, I think most uh, universities uh, at the moment when they are going to teach you criminology, um, one of the aspects that's become quite important is to always um, understand the uh, uh, the importance of understanding that criminology is as much as a part of our society as anything else. Crime uh, is a part of our society. It uh, often is a byproduct of uh, our social uh, norms or our political decisions. And um, that's why criminology is very, very interesting. Often in um, lectures, we would uh, talk to students about, you know, when was there a spike in a certain kind of crime? in the society and then we would link it back to what were the events happening around that time which might have caused those uh, uh, increases in deviant behavior. Uh, at any higher education institution when you're learning about criminology, uh, the, one of the primary goals of higher education institutions is by the time you graduate uh, with a degree in criminology is for you to develop a critical and focused mind uh, in the field of criminology. It's really important uh, as budding criminologists that you're analytical, that you're critical, you're questioning everything uh, that you're reading and you're um, understanding. And uh, in terms of uh, what would be covered in a standard uh, BSc criminology program uh, would be, like I said, it would be a scientific study. So you would be developing as a social scientist. Um, a lot of times in the final year of uh, a criminology program, you will be embarking on a, uh, an independent dissertation project as well, where you will be um, doing a whole research project based in criminology, um, you know, finding out about uh, the science of criminology. Um, and uh, in the program itself, there will be a lot of different fields that would come together. So there would be a sociological aspect in criminology, like I said, society plays a really important role. Uh, there's also um, aspects within uh, the justice system that uh, is quite important uh, for you to be aware of as criminologists. Um, and then the main, uh, one of the main goals is so that you understand the theory and then you understand its applications um, in a critical uh, way. Um, and uh, these are some of the examples of um, topics that you might cover uh, in criminology. There might be uh, topics that are specific to certain types of crime. Uh, there can be topics that are uh, uh, coming from a sociological perspective, so the role of the society. Um, there would be topics around uh, the legal system. Unless you understand the legal system, you won't be able to understand, uh, you won't be able to be a successful criminologist because one aspect of uh, you, your role as a criminologist might uh, be to question the legal system if there's anything within the legal system that you feel might be uh, impacting uh, people's engagement with deviant behavior that might be really, really important as well. And also understanding uh, mental health and uh, the human mind and how does that impact uh, criminology. So this is just an example of uh, some of the modules uh, that you might cover in a criminology program. Um, if you see in every uh, higher education institution, when you cover a criminology uh, degree, you will actually have a mix of um, uh, modules that come from all these different fields. I think that's what makes criminology so interesting. So you will have modules specific to um, uh, legal frameworks. You would have modules that are uh, specific to uh, society and how criminology sits within the society. Um, and those discussions about whether uh, crime uh, impacts society or is it society that uh, impacts crime and then um, based on the current uh, circumstances, there would be modules that are specific to uh, certain criminal behavior. And these might be uh, the, um, uh, the kinds of criminal behavior that is probably uh, of most importance. Um, most criminology programs will also cover uh, topics about duty of care because um, it's really important for us as criminologists to be aware of uh, what um, our uh, duty of care towards um, any person engaging with deviant behavior is. Um, and usually, finally, you always will have a module 
um, that will be on your independent project. So that's what to expect. So uh, usually in all uh, universities in the first and second year, you gain knowledge from the field of crim criminology. And in your third year, you sort of give back to that social science by doing your own independent project uh, where you advance the knowledge in the field of uh, criminology. So here's a whistle talk tour from me uh, about uh, what criminology is and what to expect. And I'll pass you back to John again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Moitri. Um, really great introduction, looking at reasons to consider criminology courses, but also what to expect on it. Um, just to confirm, Moitri is joining us from the University of Chichester and she's a senior lecturer over there. Our next speaker today is Grace. Grace is joining us from the University of Gloucestershire. Grace is a lecturer. Um, and she's going to talk about careers in criminal, after a criminology degree, but also maybe touching on some application tips as well. And, and as you'll find out, Grace has had quite a, a career already herself. So I'll pass things straight over to Grace, please. So hello, everyone. So um, my name is Grace Boughton. I am a lecturer here at the University of Gloucestershire, um, and I'm currently academic course lead for the BSc Criminology programme here as well. Um, again, like Moitri, I've... Um, provided my contact details, which I'll flag a reminder um, later, should you need to get in touch about anything. Um, but as John says, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about application tips when it comes to your UCAS application and also where criminology can take you. So to start with then, this really is your time to shine as a student. It's time to put you forward um, in relation to your personal statement in particular. So really do take time over your personal statement. The more preparation you can do, the better. So try and start as early as possible. Because what you can do is you can, once you start earlier, you can start drafting and drafting and ask your teachers or your tutors um, to take a look for you as well and to seek advice from them because they will be able to help you with this particular part of the process and don't forget there's also the UCAS website where you can go on and have a look at the different array of universities that um, put forward criminology as a as a degree program but also you can have a look on there for their own um, their own hints and tips in relation to particularly writing and crafting your personal statement. But what I would like to see in a personal statement myself as a, as a lecturer and as a course lead is for you to show off your skills and your enthusiasm for, um, uh, you know, sh for, for this particular discipline. So, for example, is there a particular part of criminology that you're interested in learning about and wanting to know more? For example, you might be interested in the policing side of things or maybe the prison side of things or youth justice. Put forward your enthusiasm and show us why, you know, us as an institution should take you on into our programme. Perhaps you could evidence that with a little bit of wider reading um, to demonstrate to us that you've you've gone above and beyond. As Moitri mentioned earlier, you know, this idea of um, crime docs gone mad, <laughs> for want of a better phrase, on Netflix and any other um a video streaming platform. So show us that you've taken those extra steps into looking into this as a, as, as a serious option for you. Perhaps you could tell us why you've chosen university in particular as your next step in your, you know, not just in your career, but in your life, it's a big decision to make. And potentially you could link into that, why criminology is the course for you? Why do you think a criminology program, whether that be a, a single honours program, which is just criminology in and of itself, or a joint major minor program. Um, why you think criminology in any particular aspect is going to be a benefit for you. Perhaps you could give us a little indication as to um, how perhaps your, your current studies have sparked an interest in wanting to know more and learn more about um, crime as a, a discipline within itself. For example, at sixth form or at college, you may have taken um, sociology, which is um, the founding father really of criminology, the founding discipline. Maybe um, you've done psychology, maybe you've even done some criminology based um, 
uh, topics or modules beforehand, or it could be something, you know, a little bit more outside of the norm. Maybe you've looked at it in a historical context, in history, for example. Um, so you could give us an indication as to maybe how your current studies have gone on to interest, uh, to, to help your interest in this particular discipline moving forward. You could also showcase to us any work experience that you've done. Um, obviously, it's quite difficult at the moment, but um, you may have done some beforehand. You may have done some volunteering work. So how has that gone on to potentially pique your interest in this particular discipline? Or maybe you've got other achievements that you can showcase to us as well. Maybe you've been involved in um, sports programmes, like I said, volunteering work. Um, and what you can do there is mention them, but also not just mention them fleetingly, but to give purpose behind why you're showcasing it. So perhaps you could showcase different um, skills that you've acquired through these um, outside achievements. So for example, your communication skills, your teams, your team building skills, or maybe even your organizational skills. So um, perhaps most importantly for some, um, you may already know what career you want to go into. You may be one of those very lucky individuals who knows what they want to do and what they want to get out of life. And maybe criminology might be um, the way, criminology as a university degree rather, might be a way for you to achieve your dream career. So I'm going to talk a little bit um, now about um, the different types of careers that you can go into through, um, achieve, through getting a, a degree in um, criminology. This is by no means an exhaustive list um, by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it's just a couple, um, just to showcase the, the variety of different um, work professions which you can go into. And as John mentioned, um, I will explain a little bit about um, my journey through criminology as well. So perhaps um, to start with then, the most, one of the most obvious places, arguably, is uh, the police service. Um, so graduates can, um, there, there are a variety of ways now in which one can join the police service. But through having a university degree um, in criminology, um, there are an, array, are an array rather of different roles in which you can go into at the police service. So perhaps you are interested in going in as a uniformed officer. Brilliant, fantastic. But there are different roles within the police service as well. So, for example, um, police staff. So, um, you know, police, um, crime analysts, for example. I myself, um, after my master's degree, I went on to work for the police, for um, one of the police and crime commissioners as a project officer. Um, so again, not uniformed police in how we, we always, you know, tend to think of them, um, but another route into, into this particular service and uh, equally satisfying jobs to do. Also here, particularly at, at the University of Gloucestershire, we have um, an array of different facilities um, that can help um, our students when it comes to gaining the practical skills, particularly in, in the policing and the crime scene investigations side of life. So we have a crime house and we have a couple new facilities um, that we're going to be adding to our portfolio at the moment. So again, something else for you to consider when you're choosing um, your, uh, where you want to go for university and what you want to get out of your university experience, you know, whether you want it more um, classroom based or whether you want the more hands on practical approach. We, um, you could also join the prison service, should you want to as a prison officer, um, there are also graduate fast track graduate schemes in in relation to the prison service in which um, graduates can go for they're quite competitive but they can help with um, almost like fast tracking um, through this particular service um, so again this is another one perhaps that is more obvious um, but it is perhaps coming to university you know you might um, want to 
understand more about prisons, why we have prisons, um, why is it, um, why is incarceration one of our go-to methods for dealing with crime and, and punishment, for example? These are things that, as Moitri explained earlier, that you'll probably touch upon um, as you go throughout your um, degree programme. And again, by going through that, you can gain that knowledge and that classroom based experience moving forward, should this be a profession that you want to go into. We also um, have um, students that have gone on to work for the probation service so this is the management of offenders um, once they come out of prison in the community um, again um, you, we, you have at the moment two different forms of probation um, you have the national um, probation service and the crc they they deal with different categories of different categories of prisoners severity of risk and harm to others but again we've had students that have gone on to work for this particular service and have really thrived in it because they've been able to take what they've learned in their classroom based studies about um different types of offenders um, and how how to approach it from a philosophical and theoretical point of view I put that into practice in the world of work. We also, um, students can go and work in youth services. So whether this be, um, you know, um, extracurricular support organisations or the youth offending service, for example. And those four that I've, I've mentioned already are probably the more obvious routes that you think of when thinking of, you know, a criminology degree and where could you go with it? And, but, you know, like I said earlier, it's not an exhaustive list and you can go into other um, different avenues um, and different professions. One of which being charity or working for charities or support organisations. So, for example, victim support services. Um, up and down the country, you'll find localised domestic abuse support services, sexual abuse support services, for example, different types of helplines that individuals can call into. And this is something which, you know, again, as Moitri mentioned, the, the, the breadth and the wide variety that criminology can give you is, is wonderful as a discipline. It can really help when it comes to, you know, perhaps looking outside of the criminal justice system box, as it were, because individuals um, will have just as much of an importance when um, going into these, like I say, outside of the box kind of organisations. Students can go on to um, become uh, heavily involved in research and different types of analysis, so becoming research analysts. So as Moitri mentioned earlier, pretty much every degree programme that you go into in relation to criminology will have some sort of research element, research component in um, levels four and five, which is your first and second year at university. And in your last year, you will um, have the opportunity to do um, a dissertation, an independent project, as Moitri put it. And in doing this, you develop um, a wonderful skill set when it comes to um, being able to identify and collect and analyze different types of data sets, what we would call qualitative and quantitative data. So data, um, quantitative data is all about numbers and numerical values, whereas qualitative is more about the in-depth and richness that interviews and, and words and finding out people's experiences can give you. So. Um, we provide that um, through the, the dissertation process, but also here at the University of Gloucestershire, for example, we have different points um, throughout all levels um, in which you can be actively involved in um, live projects and hone those skills even more so before you get to that dissertation crunch point in your final year. You could also go on to work for the civil service or potentially a local authority. Again, the civil service have fast track, fast track schemes for graduates. Um, 
and um, so it can elevate it can get you through the process a lot quicker um, and there are a variety of different what roles in which you can um, take on at local authority level as well again you what you do is you you will end up taking everything that you learn from the classroom here at, at within a university no matter what university you go to and you can apply it to um, the world of work and it's wonderful when we hear back from students who um, you know have gone into these particular worlds of work and professions who get back in touch with us let us know how they're getting on and they say oh yeah well it's wonderful because I can see you know what I learned in the classroom I'm now putting into practice or it's now helping me with my practice and um, as an academic there's no better compliment to hear really and then finally um, what you could end up doing is doing um, is staying on and doing further studies and remaining within academia so for example further study could um, include um, a taught master's program it could be a master's by research program and then you could want to develop and hone your skills as an academic even more by um, going through the doctoral or PhD process. I myself um, have naturally I've found myself coming full circle and I'm now um, a full-time lecturer here at the University of Gloucestershire but um, it, it was thanks to the support um, systems and the fantastic um, encouragement that I had at my um, undergraduate, which encouraged me to apply for a taught master's programme, which was here at the University of Gloucestershire. And then as a result from that, I, um, like I said earlier, I went to work for the police and crime, the local police and crime commissioner's office, in which I myself managed to put everything that I'd learned at undergraduate and master's level into practice because as a project officer I was required to um, liaise with a variety of um, different organizations you know not just in the criminal justice sector either um, you know in the education sector in other emergency services sectors um, organizations rather um, and it helped me um, to put those critical thinking and application skills that Moitri mentioned earlier into practice. And I thoroughly um, loved my job when I worked for the Office of the Police and Crime Commissioner. Um, but what that helped me um, to do on a personal level was to reflect and take in everything that was going on from a criminal justice perspective. Um, and I began to question um, more so different elements of, um, uh, you know, different elements of the criminal justice um, system and particularly domestic homicide reviews in particular, which is where I, you know, I took that particular gem of an idea and then um, uh, have ended up um, doing a PhD looking at domestic homicide reviews myself, of which I'm in the final stages, fingers crossed, she says, of her PhD experience at the moment. So I've gone like completely round robin and um, have thoroughly enjoyed um, uh, my my employment history to date um, but this is just to, like I say just to give you a flavor as to what you can do Moitri mentioned wonderfully in her um, presentation about the variety that criminology can give you as a student and that is so true and you can see by the variety of different jobs um, and professions in which you can go into when you're looking at post-university life so, um, like I said, I'll just give you my contact details again, should anyone want to get in touch, but um, as, I'm as I'm the current academic course leader for the BSc Criminology Programme here at the University of Gloucestershire, and that's a lovely photo of our campus <laughs> in the sunshine. So there's my email address and some further information should you um, want to look into anything in a little bit more detail but I'm more than happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations should anybody um, want to talk anything through in more detail so thank you ever so much John for having me. Thank you very much Grace it's a fantastic introduction not just looking at application tips but also touching on careers and 
Um, and you're really well placed to do that, given that, that you didn't go you know, directly to university. You, you had you know, a period of time working in, in other areas as well. So a big thank you to Grace joining us from the University of Gloucestershire. Our final speaker today is Bronwyn. Bronwyn is joining us from the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. And following on from what Grace, Grace was just saying about variety and careers, etc., one thing you might be looking at is the potential for doing a joint or a combined course. And, and Bronwyn's going to talk about how it actually works in practice if you decide to study a, a joint course in, in all subjects, but of which, you know, for this session, criminology would be one of the two subjects you, you study for a joint course. So with that, I'll pass things over to Bronwyn, an academic director at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. Over to you, Bronwyn. Hi, my name is Bronwyn Williams, and I'm one of the academic directors here at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David's and my portfolio includes law, criminology, policing, public services, among many of the courses that we offer here at the university. So I've been asked to talk about um, joint honours degrees and why you would study a joint honours degree. Now, as John just said, a joint honours degree is one that allows you to study more than one subject um, and then combine that into a single qualification. So it means that you get to look at two disciplines whilst at university. So within your three year or four year degree course, you can look at things like picking criminology uh, as this um, is, is the subject that we're looking at uh, for the purposes of this uh, video with another um, different discipline area. So criminology with law, for example. Now that would mean uh, you'd be looking at the foundations of law, so legal subjects such as legal process and criminal law and tort and contract. So those fundamentals of the legal profession. And then at the same time, looking at your criminology aspects. So looking at um, crime, crime and society, uh, victimization, um, theories of crime, deviance, and things like that. And how it works is that. Uh, normally you would have six modules per year, three of those would be law, and then three of those would be criminology. So you get to study those two disciplines side by side. Most of the time, the disciplines that you choose are, are related. So the examples I have here um, are criminology and policing. So again, doing a course like this, you'd be looking at um, elements of policing, the history of policing. It could be that you're looking at operational policing and then putting that alongside um, why people commit crimes. So if you're looking at a, a course in policing and, and why um, the history of policing and why uh, we have uh, a police force, what they do and the nature of the police, uh, you'd be then studying uh, the ideas of why people commit crimes and how those two marry um, marry to each other. So it gives you that broader perspective, um, not just looking at the theories behind crime, but then how that works wider uh, in, in society and how it's policed. Again, um, another example would be criminology and psychology. Um, so looking at how they all fit so not just why people commit crimes but how people think in general now why you would do that well it increases the variety variety of the modules that you're studying um, increases those opportunities uh, gives you a greater balance a wider area of interest so that it allows you to look at different career paths it adds extra to it um, Joint honours degrees are, are quite wide in other areas. For instance, you could do law and business or you could do maths and accountancy. And all it does is it improves your opportunities, improves your job prospects, because you start looking at different um, areas, different disciplines, and it just widens that uh, boundaryless career that you can have um, after university. It's not harder. Um, you, you only study sort of 120 credits of, of modules. Um, it doesn't add more work, particularly if you choose uh, 
two subjects and two discipline areas that complement each other because what you will see is you you will see sort of theory and practice so things like criminology and policing you learn the theory of crime and why people commit crime and then you see how that is put into practice and how it's enforced and how it all works uh, with the police and that wider law enforcement so it's about uh, just simply increasing your knowledge increasing your awareness um, and giving you the best possible opportunities to get a job at the end of it. And you'll have heard about all the different types of jobs you can go into uh, with criminology by adding that extra um, discipline and extra subject area. All it will do is increase those opportunities and increase those job prospects at the end. And also it's pretty interesting to learn um, two different disciplines and how they merge and marry together. So if you're thinking or you're not quite sure which discipline area you want to go into, have a think about taking uh, a joint honours degree um, and, and really looking at two different areas because uh, from those you will get to get to experience um, and develop that knowledge um, in those two areas um, and basically give you a greater insight into a wider um, career prospects. So I hope that helps and if you've got any other questions um, you can always contact um, somebody from Uni Taster Days or me at the university. Thank you.